Hi you guys, it's Tanya, and today I want to share with you a fun way to use up those jelly prints that you've been printing and um, I've been printing all month. Uh, here's a glimpse at some of them that I have in my stash. Today we're going to use the 3x5 jelly arts plate uh, as our back for, for making our background for our card. So I'm starting out with the Kiwi uh, Apple Barrel Paint craft paint from plaid and a little bit of white paint also and I'm just gonna braid that and mix it together that's gonna make me a light uh, yellowish green color and then I'm gonna use this is a die cut that I have in my stash it's from uh, the MFT and it's called a Moroccan background I think I will put links to all of the supplies down below for you guys so you can easily reference them and then this is the jack-o-lantern orange and I'm just gonna pounce a little bit of that into the green as well uh, you know I encourage you to go through your stash and see what you have as far as backgrounds and textures uh, your cards don't have to look exactly like mine so if you don't have these dies just you know like I said reach into your stash and see what you have that would be comparable so to clean off my plate so I can start with my blue uh, all I did was pull out another jelly print and just lift that color right off of there there's no need to waste it now I'm gonna add a little bit of this uh, bimini blue from apple barrel and a little bit of white because it is a very bright uh, blue and I wanted it to be a little more sky blue And this is the fence uh, background from Diversions. Uh, like I said, just use what you have. You could uh, some some ideas would be to use um, netting. Uh, you know, or the netting that oranges or onions come in that would be super cool too. Uh, Punchinella is really cool. If you don't have Punchinella, you could always just uh, die cut a bunch of different things. Um, like punch, punch holes in a, a strip of tape or something uh, so I decided that my green down below needed to be a little bit more blue green just to give a little bit of a shadowy tone so I've added a little bit of that bimini blue to the kiwi and the white and I love that green I'm getting a, a kind of a light Kelly green there so um, I love how you can see all of the different colors um, on my on my background here it's just really giving it a lot of depth and interest so I decided I needed to put a little bit more blue up at the top to hide that line that was created from the jelly plate and so I'm just stenciling that on once you have your background exactly like you want it you want it to be completely dry before you start this next step uh, today I am using the reminisce gel pen uh, this is my favorite gel pen at the moment I love the way it writes over the acrylic paint and I am going to go ahead and write my sentiment first because I want to make sure I have plenty of room for it and I've noticed that as I've been making these that I am forgetting to leave room to put a sentiment so if you're not comfortable with handwriting then by all means pull out your stamps uh, and and just stamp a sentiment on here that would work perfectly fine as well I do recommend using a permanent ink though uh, so that if you do decide to go back and add some more uh, color or anything you don't have to worry about the inks running but once I got my sentiment on sentiment on here um, I, and I did do a little play on words with it I did happy birthday instead of birthday haha -ha. so uh, then I'm going back through some of my other prints and I'm trying to find something that would be interesting for my bird bodies and I came up with this I love the contrast of the warmer colors up against the cooler colors of the blues in the background so uh, just you know like I said go through your stash of jelly prints and see what you have um, what you've already printed on uh, this is a great way to take one of those really bold obnoxious patterns and when you cut it down into bite sizes like this or you punch it into smaller pieces uh, it really gives a really nice interesting look so I'm cutting out four kind of obscure oblong shapes uh, notice that they're not uh, the same they're they're very different each of them uh, in size and in 
<laughs> they're kind of wobbly and I think that's what makes my little whimsical bird so interesting and fun I'm cutting out four of these circles because I'm going to put three on the front cover and then one on the inside of the card so once I figure out where I want my birds to be placed I am going to go ahead and adhere them down with a scotch quick dry glue if you happen to get too much glue on one and you don't want it to seep out just uh, blot it onto a piece of scratch paper and that will smooth out the ink and it'll blot over onto the scratch paper and not your project um, so there's a little tip for you so once you get those into place you're gonna let them sit for just a second I'm gonna go ahead and start doing a little bit of doodling I'm gonna trace around my circles with my gel pen that's just gonna make them a little bold and uh, make them pop a little more against the busy background now I'm drawing a heart and in the center of the heart I'm putting some little swirls just to give it some interest those are going to be my tails for my birds so I'm going to repeat these steps for all three birds giving each one a tail and giving each one uh, circling around each one of their bodies and I want them all three to look as if they're looking up at the happy birthday sentiment so I am pulling out an orange marker here from Faber-Castell Design Memory Craft. This is the Stamper's Big Brush Artist Pen. And this is the Orange Glaze 113. And then I'm also going to use the pink, which is uh, Pink Matter Lake 129, uh, for their wings and uh, their tail feathers. The orange is for their beak. Uh, you can use any marker you happen to have in your stash. You could even use Sharpies for this step if you wanted to. Uh, then I'm going to trace around all of those elements, put some eyes on them, and do, do a few little flicks in their feathers to just make it look like their feathers, or on their wings, just to make them look like feathers. And then I'm going to draw these really long, exaggerated legs, because I just think this is what makes them super funny, cute, and whimsical. And uh, I decided to pull out my white gel pen. This is from Reminisce as well. And I'm going to put a few little dots there in the center of their eyes, a line over the top of their nose, and then flick some highlights into their feathers as well. And then I decided to uh, add a couple of highlights there to my sentiment as well. And now I am going to reach for my little Sharpie pen because I decided to color in their feathers on their tails and since there's such a dark color in the background and the um, Stamper Big Brush Artist pens are very translucent, I decided to color them in with a white Sharpie paint pen and then I went back over them with the uh, the pink matter lake 129 and just filled them in then I decided to go ahead and trace over the heart parts one more time just because I covered it up with a little bit of paint so uh, now it's time to add a few shadows to them to make them look a little more realistic uh, I'm adding the cold gray um, I one two three zero and all I'm doing is tracing around their little bodies at the bottom, um, putting a little circle there at their feet because they would uh, cast their little fat bodies, would cast a little shadow there on the ground, and uh, just coming down their legs. Now I'm taking my May Green number 170 and just flicking some little grass uh, blades there around their air, the grassy areas. Just gives a little bit of texture and interest and depth to uh, the base of my card. So I'm going to put that to the side and wash my hands really well because now I am going to handle the uh, inside of the card and I don't want any of this residual paint on my fingers to transfer to the stark white uh, cardstock. So I've decided to go ahead and add a little bit of that green there to the base. Uh, I don't need to worry about the whole jelly printing and all of that there. I'm just going to stencil these this little pieces on here. It's okay if it stays somewhat whimsical because that's kind of the look we're going for anyway. And in here I want to be able to have plenty of space to write a message to the person who's receiving the card. So next I'm taking that fourth body that I had cut out and I'm placing it kind of high here on the card on the right hand side. And since I know I want to fill in with the uh, pink and I have no color there in the background I just went ahead and added the pink directly to the cardstock and 
same process as we did with the front of the card we're building out a nose we're building out their wings and then we're going to trace over it and just flick some details in there as well um, and then those big eyes oh I just love these little birdies so while I finish doing this what I want to remind you is over on my blog I have a contest going on where I'm giving away a six by six jelly print a plate so uh, go check out my blog post uh, to find out how you can be entered into that contest uh, you must be a subscriber of my blog and uh, I'm going to pick a random winner from the comments that are left on all of the jelly printing that we did in the month of June. So make sure you go check out that post and get the details. I'll put a link to the post down below. I'll also put a link down below to the post that gives you all the details about this project, all the products that we used, and uh, where you can purchase those as well. So. Uh, once I get all of my little details here on my inside of my card, uh, I'm going to go ahead and start building out the physical card. So I decided to use yellow cardstock as my base, and this is just some cardstock I got in a pack, uh, a value pack, and I've cut it to a top folding card that is an A2 size, which is four and a quarter by five and a half. And then I've cut a piece of a white cardstock that is going to be a frame, and it is cut a quarter of an inch smaller. And then I'm going to add some uh, 3D foam tape to the back of my card panel here for my birds which is a quarter of an inch smaller than the last panel so I have a really nice uh, frame there going on on the outside and again those measurements will all be in the blog post um, I'm measuring challenged so no worries I eyeball almost everything <laughs> so anyway now I've decided that I really like the look of that whimsical frame around the edge of the inside of the card so I thought I'd mimic that here on the outside of the card as well uh, it's just a really nice uh, border to send your eye back into the center where the birds are located and I just love these it was super simple to make these cards you could definitely do this in an afternoon especially if your jelly prints were already pulled and you didn't have to do that process so here's a glimpse of the inside of the card I hope you've enjoyed this production and it's given you some ideas of some things to do with all of these uh, gorgeous prints that you've been printing out and of course these birds were they could be pulled on anything from book text to anything so really it's just so fun here's a glimpse of the outside of the card I hope you guys have enjoyed this and if you decide to follow along with me please hashtag following Tanya Gibbs in your social media outlets so that I can see what you guys are doing based on what I have done uh, and it's so fun to see you guys uh, use these techniques in your own uh, projects and things so thank you so much for hanging out if you enjoyed this production please give me a thumbs up give leave me a comment and let me know what you think and uh, share this with a friend don't forget to go check out my blog post for details on how you can be entered for the six by six jelly plate drawing